name is Nasli Fanners, and it's my pleasure to be part of this honorary ceremony where we recognized distinguished women in various fields in St. Lucia. So we are here for the launch of the book From Inspiration to Creation, St. Lucian Women Sustaining Lives and Livelihoods Through the Arts. And it features and celebrates 40 St. Lucian women artists who exemplify excellence in the arts, including entrepreneurs, art educators, and advocates for the arts. And this was done to commemorate the 40th independence anniversary of St. Lucia. So we are here to recognize and to celebrate and to also give some background to this publication. The project under which the book was done is entitled Publication on St. Lucian Women, Sustaining Lives and Livelihoods Through the Arts. And that was funded by UNESCO through the St. Lucia National Commission for UNESCO under the Participation Program Request 2018 to 2019 in the amount of U.S. $23,000. This publication is dedicated to women in various creative and artistic disciplines who have created opportunities for themselves and who maintain their livelihoods primarily through the arts. The book is expected to be distributed through the public and private school system to be used as reference and research material for students and will also assist them in preparation of the journal component of the school-based assessment for the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate CSEC Visual Arts Program. You will hear more about this later, but let me specially welcome you to this and let me invite Ms. Jenny Joseph to offer some brief remarks. Ms. Joseph is the Acting Director of Gender Relations. Please welcome her. Lady Janice Compton, Mrs. Signa Greaves Francis, distinguished, recognized persons in the book. It is an honor to have been invited to give brief remarks at the launching of this groundbreaking publication that focuses on women and their stories of how they have been able to sustain lives and livelihoods through their self expression in the arts. It is a proud day for women, for those who pursue the advancement of women and those who work towards achieving gender equality. One of the greatest pleasures in life is to wake up every day with the ability to do what you love to do. One of the most liberating of opportunities is the ability to make money through doing what you love to do. And one of the most rewarding experiences is the, the ability to sustain your life and create opportunities for employment and the development of others by doing what you love to do. If women are really the natural carers that they are stereotyped to be, then the 40 women highlighted in the publication from inspiration to creation St. Lucian women sustaining lives and livelihoods through the arts have reached the elusive pinnacle of self-actualization in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. For indeed, women who sustain lives and livelihoods through the arts have found a way to merge and synergize productive and reproductive work in a creative, fascinating, and beautiful way. One of the global challenges in achieving gender equality is valuing the work that women do. Because women all over the world spend at least twice as much time engaged in reproductive and community work or unpaid care work when compared to men. In St. Lucia, women's engagement in reproductive and community work compared to their male counterparts appears to be even higher than twice. Although some of the disciplines in the arts have for some time now had a productive value, such as architecture, interior design, and decorating, many of the arts, such as culinary arts, dance, and even arts education, tended to be largely unpaid. It is therefore very encouraging to see as many women in the publication 
sustaining their lives through culinary arts, dance, and arts education, as those in architecture, interior design, and decorating. It demonstrates a shift from unpaid activity into paid activity. It is a very small step, but a significant one, as the economic autonomy of women was not always perceived as a right. I therefore applaud the St. Lucia National Commission for UNESCO and Mrs. Greaves Francis for choosing to highlight women who are making livelihoods out of the arts and in so doing, giving permission to other women to tap into that abundant opportunity that exists for them to become economically independent. I further commend the National Commission for UNESCO for supporting the dream and inspiration of School of Art and Design St. Lucia and Mrs. Signa Graves Francis. This partnership, like the publication itself, materializes a journey from inspiration to creation. I have no doubt that the author, Mrs. Graves Francis, has done a wonderful job bringing to life the journey of all these inspiring women who were able to take their ideas and inspirations and make them into reality, and further, to make them sufficiently productive so as to sustain their lives. It is my hope that the same passion and determination that drove the women in this publication will inspire the users of this book to make their ideas become a reality as well. And then, like the author of the book, and the women featured in it make these now real ideas, take them to the heights of economic independence. Congratulations, Mrs. Greaves, Francis, on your achievement. <laughs> and congratulations to all the strong and inspiring women who were featured in the publication. I thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Joseph, for those remarks. I think you gave us a great context here. It went beyond just thinking about women in the arts, but the position they hold in the society, the historical context for us in terms of not being paid to now being able to sustain our lives. Thank you very much for that comprehensive education in a very short time. Um, so now we want to focus a bit on the book, and you've heard mention of Mrs. Signa Greaves Francis, who is also um, responsible for the School of Art and Design that has been teaching children how to develop their skill and how to appreciate art. So we would, we would now want to make a few presentations of complimentary copies to a few women in the audience, and I would invite Mrs. Greaves, Mrs. Greaves Francis, Sometimes when you go way back, you remember the name that you were accustomed to using, and we don't get past that. Um, so there are a lot of women who have inspired us, and this first recipient is, is certainly, I think, has the title now of the mother of the nation. Um, and uh, she herself has produced females who are artists in their own right and who are going to be celebrated here today as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the first recipient of a complimentary copy, please help me welcome Lady Janice Compton. <laughs> Make sure the cameras are getting that. I promise that was not the intention. All right. So we'll get a little softer with the music. We like the background touch. <laughs> the next presentation is to the lady we just praised for giving us all the context that we needed, and that is the Acting Director of Gender Relations, Miss Jenny Joseph. So
So the music you're hearing in the background is, is very important and timely. Unfortunately, um, Miss Barbara could not be here today, but she still wanted her music infused. So you can pretend she's here live <laughs> playing her sax as we honor our women. Um, there's also a complimentary copy for the Ministry of Education. I'm not sure if there's a representative here. No? Okay, but we will put it aside for them. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for as many of the 40 women here as possible who are represented, we are going to call out their names just to recognize them if they're not here. And if they are, we will welcome them or a family member to accept the book on their behalf. We begin with accessory design and we call on Kale Cassius. Tariba Donacimento. Her mom is here, so we invite her to collect on her behalf. The mothers have to take a lot of praise for what our ladies have become. So I'm going to I'm going to be a little bit of a director, and I would really like for you to step onto the platform to receive <laughs> your book. So, Jennifer, you will demonstrate for us so well how to do that. Jennifer Jalousy Louis. <laughs> it is your moment. Take your time and receive it. <laughs> We're still under the category of accessory and design, and I invite Terrell Nicholas. wonderful work by all of these women. I wear some of their pieces and have their handbags, so we look good when we <laughs> buy their stuff. In the field of architecture, interior design, and decorating, Miss Dahlia Faswa. Ms. Andrea Girau. And Ms. Duena Greaves. Her aunt will accept on her behalf. We move on now to art educators. You know, it's bad of me to say something about some people, but I, I have to do this this time. You, you, you'll understand why. She's been an art educator since I was in primary school. And I know I look young, but I have a lot of years <laughs> on my head. Primary school, listening to her on the radio. So we didn't have art educators in each school, but she was ingenious and she found a way to reach all students. Ladies and gentlemen, honor Ms. Joyce Ogeest. She didn't know how to Ms. Denise Joyce Ogeest. Another woman who's been doing this for several years. I hear she's celebrating the her 40 as well. And I think that is so significant. Um, in dance, Miss Teresa Laurie Collimore. next woman is actually my age. She's my contemporary and she has this knack for reaching young people and getting them to create. Um, I think she's been an educator for her professional life. Please welcome Ms. Delphia Natrum.
We also want to recognize posthumously, and I was hoping her son would be here to collect, but Miss Petronilla de Tourville, <laughs> who needs no introduction. The award will be made to her family, but her son was invited to be here to collect on her behalf. So give a round of applause to the art educators, architecture and design and decorating and accessory design that we've heard so far. We move now to the area of craft textile design and we invite Miss Irina Alfos to collect her book. Is Miss Alfos here? No? Okay, we will get it to her. Um, the next lady who needs no introduction is Miss Lynn Bristol. Her work has traveled beyond the St. Lucia, and she has set the stage for so many who came after her. I know of designers who will tell the story of how she is very eager, one just touched her, to share, <laughs> to share her craft. She doesn't feel like it's competition. <laughs> Miss Katharina Osman, not present. And Ms. Daphne Stephen. Okay, but we celebrate them nonetheless in the area of craft, textile, and design. In culinary, Ms. Edna Butcher. One of applause for her. Ms. Simona June Leo Morrill. We celebrate her in the area of culinary. And of course, our culinary ambassador. Miss Nina Compton, and we ask Lady Janice to collect on her behalf. <laughs> we move on to the category of dance, and all the women identified here have had a long career in dance. Um, and again, from the time I was a child, so maybe that says something about their age this time. <laughs> we call on first Miss Rosemary Etienne Paris <laughs> from Shamalayan. Her, her sister is here to collect on her behalf. I remember the Shamalayan dancers so well. And they actually participated in the 40th anniversary um, display that we had at the Saab last year. Next, we celebrate Miss Christine Samuel. She has transcended dance and moved into other areas that you see her wearing now. But very influential in many young lives and the dancers that we currently see, she had an input in their work. And Posthumously, we recognize Miss Virginia Virgie Alexander <laughs> and also Miss Teresa Hall. <laughs> Who can forget those two women in our lives again from very young? We move on to the area of fashion now and we want to recognize Miss Regina Edwin. Edward? Her daughter is here to collect on her behalf. Miss Keitha Greaves. Miss <laughs> Esma Jamari. Her sister will collect on her behalf. <laughs> hmm? And Miss Hilda Michelle. What is he doing? Her son is here to collect on her behalf. If you were wondering. In the area of film, theater arts, those people need no introduction. Miss Matherin Emanuel. <laughs> Gone beyond the shores of St. Lucia and making her mark as a filmmaker. 
in theater, Ms. Drinia Frederick. Another of my contemporaries that I'm so proud of. As is Miss Davina Lee. <laughs> Making her mark in the area of film as well. And reviving a tradition that she will not let die, Miss June Frederick, June King Frederick. <laughs> Miss Dahlia Faswa will collect on her behalf. We're at 30, so we have 10 more. But we could go on because this is so rewarding. In the area of music and musicians, Miss Frances Marilyn Baptiste. Oh, she has her exhibition going on now at the City Hall um, for, is it 30 years in, in Calypso? So we recognize Lady Lynn, if you didn't know who I was talking about. <laughs> that is her real name. Miss Barbara Cadet, who we said could not be present today and extends her apologies. And we're hearing her music in the background. Miss Shirley Ann Cyril Myers. Myers. She has made her mark in the world of gospel music, celebrated for that. <laughs> and posthumously in this area, we want to recognize Miss Marie Silifa Sesen Descartes. Miss Samuel will collect, Mrs. Samuel will collect on her behalf. Or her family's behalf. <laughs> In the area of painting, um, this first one I know was also an educator. She was in the schools for a while, but now she is independent. Miss Shalon Fadler. Yeah. Happy to know that you're home. <laughs> I think she made it just in time. She's now based in Canada. So we're so happy that she exhibited some time ago some really, really lovely work. So we're happy that you made it here for this, Sharon. Miss Donna Grandison. <laughs> Applause her. She is overseas currently. And Miss Sabrina Romulus. <laughs> Celebrated as well. Our final category is in the area of photography and digital media. And we um, go back to the family of the Comptons, Miss Fiona Com Compton. So, Lady Janice, you're up there again. <laughs> That's for Fiona. You have to give it to her every time. Miss Nakita Dusose. And Miss Colleen Jules. Oh. Early women in the area of photography and digital media. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we just heard our 40 names of outstanding women in the arts. Please, another round of applause for all of them. We have a few more complimentary copies to present, um, this time for the Cultural Development Foundation. Ms. Frederick, should we ask you to collect? <laughs> Responsible for the development of our arts. Mrs. Yolanda Michelle Burton from UNESCO. Mm -hmm. 
Mrs. Crystal Riviere. And Miss Elder Juanita Michelle. And we thank them for the support that they have provided as uh, this book was being developed. Before I, I hand over to Mrs. Greaves, I see two students, and I'm happy to see the student representation here today as part of the, the purpose of, of this publication it is also to provide encouragement to young people in the arts and to really make them understand that you can make a living of this and you shouldn't let anybody deter you from those dreams. Because we had a, a culture or tradition here where you could make money from the arts and we discouraged young people to participate. So I hope um, when NTN shows this, that we ensure that young people, particularly young females, are able to witness this. And that in the schools, it's placed in a prominent position and it's used in the classroom. So this kind of inspiration can really filter through our young people. We're almost at the end already, ladies and gentlemen. Short and sweet. <laughs> To give the vote of thanks, I invite creator, Miss Signa Greaves Francis. Good morning, and let me personally say again, welcome, and thank you for being here. Can you all hear me? Yes. All right, wonderful. <laughs> okay. In um, 2011, I began with what is now School of Art and Design, St. Lucia, and we started with 50 students during a summer program, and after thinking and planning for four years, I decided to finally get the initiation or get the school started. Initially, it seemed impossible and overwhelming. However, I did some research and found out that many art institutions which exist in the US today were either started by one person, a husband and wife, or a group of artists. Once I had discovered that, I felt reassured that it was possible. So far, so after, sorry, much research and years of planning, I finally got started. I recall when I sent out my press releases, Mr. Guy Ellis of the Mirror called me and he said he didn't just want a press release. He said he wanted to interview the mad person who <laughs> <laughs> would think of starting an art school of all places in St. Lucia. <laughs> so after the interview, he encouraged me and he told me that he wanted me to invite him when we had our official opening of our establishment. <laughs> Well, now it's 2020, and I'm happy that although we stopped for normal operations, and I keep telling everybody that we stopped for normal operations in 2016, we continued with our summer program, but now we, we finally have a home, which is in Marisil. So we stopped to move from San Susi, where we operated in the Carillac building, and now we are in Marisol. And I'm very, very happy for that achievement. Um, it is our location. We, it belongs to us. 
the deed has the name School of Art and Design on it. So it has been a great milestone and it took much hard work to get that and to get that achievement. And I think one of the things I had in mind when I started, the first thing I thought of, I remember somebody telling me, how could you think of possibly having a building when you just started? And I was like, well, um, that's my focus, that's my goal, and that's what I was looking forward to. And now it has become a reality. It has always been our objective to promote aspiring artists and designers, and this initiative today fits right into that objective. From inspiration to creation, St. Lucian Women Sustaining Lives and Livelihoods Through the Arts was actually part of the celebration of St. Lucia's 40th Independence Anniversary. And I tell people that we're bringing the curtains down <laughs> with this piece of artwork. <laughs> it was said that we'd be celebrating for the year, so we, we're closing it. <laughs> and it's most fitting. I, I would like to think that what I've created is a work of art. I am an artist myself. <laughs> and what a better... Um, let's say, um, token to have, but something that you can have and, and look at and be proud of it, you know? You put artwork on the wall um, and, and so forth, so you, you'll have it right there on your coffee table. <laughs> the whole process was quite an experience. As much of the work I endeavored to do myself, <laughs> all in an effort to benefit the school and its potential students. Um, I really wanted most of the funds to go towards the school and towards the realization of us having an established home. And this is what actually happened. So I did most of the interviews. I um, crafted some of the bios, not all and did all of the legwork running around, et cetera, et cetera, including the design and whatnot. So I was really on the ground with this project, trying to ensure that we keep the costs down and to have this, the money go towards what we would have as an established home for future artists and designers in St. Lucia. First, let me thank UNESCO and the National Commission for the opportunity and all of the assistance that they provided through this process. I thank you so much, and I think that everybody here will be very pleased and very happy for the product that we at School of Art and Design and myself have created for you. Lady Janice, thank you so much for agreeing <laughs> to write the forward. I thought it was very, very fitting when I had to think of somebody um, who would actually contribute in that way. I, th I could not think of a better person. Um, Sir John obviously was the, the one who brought this country into independence 40 years ago, and uh, I could not have seen a better person to have right the Ford, especially since you have two young ladies represented in the publication as well. So I thank you for that. <laughs> Crystal. Crystal, where's Crystal? <laughs> Crystal um, assisted me with the bios, rescripting, crafting, and so forth. Most of them were um, her handiwork. And I, I did call Crystal and I did put pressure on Crystal when the time was getting down to the wire. And I want to thank Crystal so much. And her husband is next to her, Kimani. And I have to thank him as well, because when K um, Crystal could not go any further, you know, due to circumstances, I had to, to get up. But Crystal, I do appreciate your all of the effort, and I do appreciate Kimani for whatever you had to go through while Crystal was going through this process. <laughs> so thank you so much for that. 
Juanita, elder, but I call you Juanita. <laughs> I want to thank you so much. I know I put pressure on you as well. <laughs> um, having to edit and to re-edit and, and so forth, and I'm probably not giving you enough time to, to go through everything, but I think you did a, a wonderful job. Um, I think we worked well together. I was calling her and we were messaging each other. And I think you made the process a very smooth and seamless one for me. So for that, I do thank you. <laughs> to all of the women who agreed to be featured, to the families of those who are not um, alive, who contributed, I want to say thank you because without you, there would be no publication. I want to thank you for your hard work. I want to thank you for being an inspiration to the future generation that is to come. And I want to thank you especially for in our society where whatever area you're in, we know how art and, and, and so forth or the arts is viewed and there is so much that could be derived from it so i want to thank you for whether you are nurturing whether you're inspiring whether you are endeavoring to do this on your own by being an interpret entrepreneur i would like to thank you for that because it it helps others to look up to you and because you can do it they can do it also so i thank you for that I also want to thank the other persons who contributed, who were behind the scenes, those I called and asked for photographs. I saw Joan, you entered, that's right, thank you so much. <laughs> Some of the, um, I, had to, I had to call people and said, can I, can, do you have photographs of this person's design that they created, et cetera, et cetera. I had to interview family members and, and, and so forth. So I want to thank you especially, and I would like to thank Joyce Ogis, <laughs> who um, when I told her about the project, she was very, very excited. And I had a, a little stumbling block and she really, really came through with providing me, going into her archives and getting me photographs because she really wanted to see the publication um, come to fruition. So for that, I thank you so much. <laughs> to Leah Monrose, Mario Monrose, Nikita, your family. <laughs> um, I want to thank Nikita especially. Nikita, um, when I was speaking to her about, you know, doing the launch and so forth, and Nikita is actually one of our instructors. She teaches animation. And um, when I, I was speaking to Nikita and I, I called on Nikita, I said, Nikita, I need your help again. And she's like, no problem, Signa. What do you need? Mm -hmm. And every time I call on Nikita, Nikita is always there to assist in whatever way she can. And Nikita, I want to thank you so much for that. I appreciate what you do for the school tirelessly, effortlessly, without looking for reward. So I thank you so much. And I want you to convey to your family, um, everybody is going to benefit from the refreshments that they sent. <laughs> so I thank you. And I want you to extend that thank you to them for me. Thank you so much. I also want to thank Mega J. Um, they provided us with the drinks that you're going to enjoy as well. <laughs> so I want to thank them as well for um, contributing, contributing that. And I noticed um, we have a representative of Bank of St. Lucia in the audience, Annalicia. Um, Annalicia, thank you for attending on behalf of Omari. Um, Bank of St. Lucia has been a supporter of ours, I will tell you, from the very beginning. From our very first summer program, when we opened the school with the summer program, I remember somebody else was there, and she came in, and we, we asked for support. And when we had our um, exhibition, 
she came and she was so impressed with what she saw. She was actually on her way out, but she spoke to them and she said, listen, you all have to continue the support of this school. And I can say that they have continued the support and they support our Sidewalk Festival. Um, some people know the Sidewalk Festival more than they know the school. Mm -hmm. So if they haven't heard about the school, I said, have you heard about the Sidewalk Festival? Oh, yes. And then I say, we're the ones who actually have this um, activity every year at Easter time. It's going to be coming up again, okay? So um, thank you, um, Annalisa, for representing the bank here today. <laughs> if I forgot anybody, <laughs> um, I may not remember everybody's names. Like I said, most of the, the work was done by me, and so I had to be typing this speech last minute. <laughs> And as you can see, I ended up writing some. <laughs> so if I forgot anybody, um, I think I have acknowledged you in the publication. Um, so I would like to thank everybody who contributed in whatever way. My friend Marlene and Juliet, my co-workers, thank you for the encouragement. As always, when um, things seemed almost impossible, when seem things, um, sorry, things seem a bit difficult, I got encouragement for them. So I want to thank you for all of the support. Um, so again, I thank you for being here. I thank you for coming. Um, I think the turnout is, is wonderful. And I do appreciate. I hope you enjoy the publication. And I hope you treat it as a piece of, a piece of artwork. It is my artwork to you. OK? Thank you so much. <laughs> And Mrs. Greaves Francis, I think we all thank you for the work you put into this publication and we congratulate you for taking on this feat and seeing it to the end. Yeah.